What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you quickly how to use Selenium and the Chrome driver within your AWS Lambda functions. Now this is an extension of a previous video series that we've been working upon, where I first showed you how to install pip packages in your Lambda functions with within the Lambda function itself. And then after that, we took it a step further and I showed you how to use Docker to more robustly install your pip packages and install really any pip package you want. So be sure to go over those tutorials real quick before you watch this one. I'll link it right here because this is an extension specifically of that Docker tutorial because we will be using Docker today to create a Docker file to allow us to install the required pip packages and to install the Chrome driver we need to actually interact with the browser within the Lambda function. So as opposed to just pip packages in the previous tutorial, we're adding another step here where we're installing an external tool that is the Chrome driver to be able to use Selenium. And if you guys are watching this video, you probably know what Selenium is. It's simply a browser automation tool that you can do some cool things with testing and other automations you can do by moving your mouse around actually in the browser and clicking things automatically with a program. And today's program will be using Python, of course. And we have a simple script today, which we want to push to our AWS Lambda function. And this script uses Selenium very simply. And I'm not gonna go into too much details of the script, exactly what it's doing, but we have a very simple Selenium script that's importing Selenium. You can see it's defined in a Lambda handler, which is required for a Lambda function. And we're defining some Chrome option parameters. We're pointing to where the, the Chrome driver is going to be installed. And then we're going to create a driver object and we're just going to query OpenAI on Google. So what this will do is it'll go to google.com, type in OpenAI in the search browser. Of course, we won't see this. It'll just do it automatically behind the scenes as the program is running. And then it'll submit that and it'll show us the results. That's really all we're doing. And of course, if everything is successful, by the end of it, we will see the results it prints within that Google search query. So that's the simple script we have. It's in this main.py file, one simple Python script for Selenium. And in order to be able to get this script to AWS, the first thing, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, is we have some prerequisites we need. So we have to have an AWS account, obviously. We have to have a a Docker desktop install. So let me go ahead and open Docker desktop because that has to be ready to go. So let that open. And if you watch the previous tutorial, you'll probably already have that installed and ready to go. And we need the AWS CLI configured because we'll be running some AWS CLI commands to push to AWS this, this Docker build or this Docker image in ECR. So we can see Docker is open, awesome. So let's go back to this code. And then once we have that, we can simply go over this Docker file. So if you don't have a Docker file, go ahead and create one. It's just capital Docker file within the same directory as your project. And in this Docker file, we're just going to specify some things such as the base build. So we have this AWS Lambda Python. So this has Python 3.12 already included, which is nice. And then we're just going to install some Chrome dependencies with the DNF installer on this image. And then we're just going to run a script we created that allows us to install the latest version of Chrome and Chrome Dryer driver for this for this architecture. So we just go ahead and look at this real quick. And of course, I'll link this down in the description below. So this Chrome installer allows us to just install Chrome and Chrome Driver, which we need for Selenium. So we're not gonna get into too much detail about that, but it does specify these paths. So if you go ahead and play around with these, you will break the build. So be sure to maybe not play around with this too much unless you know exactly what you're doing. But we are just installing those things within this shell script. So this is a shell script, which is which allows you to run shell commands. You know, and it's just a clean way to do that. And then once we have that installed, we're just going to pip install Selenium, as you could see here. And then we're just going to copy that main.py file. So this is the only Python file I have in my project. Of course, if you're doing more complicated projects, you want to include other files as well. We went over this in the previous tutorial where I mentioned how to include other files and specify certain paths. And then finally, because it's a Lambda function, we have to specify where the Lambda handler is. So in this case, it's just main.lambda handler, which is just going to call this function. 
So now that we have that, we just simply want to build this Docker image. So I could just navigate to where the Docker file is. So CD YouTube Selenium, and then, so that's all it is. And I'm just going to run this command and build it. And it should be quick because I built it before and I haven't changed anything. Docker does have a caching function that allows you to build quickly if you've built an image before. So we're just gonna go ahead and build that. And we'll jump back to when it is done building. Okay, it looks like the Docker build took longer than expected. I don't know what happened there with the cache, but it's fine. We're not gonna worry about that. So now that we have the Docker image built, next we just want to tag it and then push it to ECR. So first to tag it, we're just gonna take this command here. So we have this command, we're just tagging it with a tag. We'll just call it Selenium Chrome Driver. Really, you can put whatever tag you like. And then we are just going to add our AWS account ID here. So in order to get your AWS account ID, you can just go to AWS and you can just grab it from here. So we could just do that and then just paste it there and we can click enter. So the tag command should be quick. And now that we tagged it, we just want to log into ECR, which is Amazon's image, image service that they have to manage our Docker images. And we can just go ahead and take this command. So I'm just going to grab this command I have here on another screen. A very simple command. So pretty much it connects our ECR to our local Docker desktop running. So we can pretty much funnel our image to AWS ECR to store it there. So once again, we just want to take that account ID that we have from our AWS account. So go ahead and take this and click enter here and this should work. So we should connect both of them just by doing that. And we went over this in the previous tutorial. So this is very similar. And finally, the next thing we have is we just want to push the image. So this is the last step. So Docker push. And then once we have that, we can go ahead and check in ECR that it is there. So we can take this ID one more time and put it here. And all these commands will be linked down in the blog below. So go ahead and view that if you do not feel like copying all these commands. And I will, I should zoom in a little bit, but really the text gets all jumbled in. Hopefully you could see a little better here just for people who have trouble seeing on small screens. And we can go ahead and push this. So it is pushing. And once again, I will give that a moment to push and we'll jump back into it when it's done pushing to ECR. Okay, so it looks like we pushed the image successfully to ECR. So now we can just go to ECR and make sure that it's in that repository. So let's go there and let's view the Docker images repository. And we can see we just pushed this image that we are going to use. So we can just go to our Lambda function or our Lambda service and create a new Lambda with this container image. So we went over this in the previous tutorial, but we'll just go over it again today. We'll call it Selenium test YouTube and we can just go browse an image and we can select it and we can select the architecture that is fine and then we can just go ahead and create the function. So give that a moment there to create. Once again, a lot of waiting today, sorry about that because it takes a little longer to deploy these Docker images as opposed to a regular Lambda function because Docker images are more heavyweights, of course, because they have essentially an operating system almost behind them as opposed to a simple lambda function which de it's deployed fairly quickly okay so finally it looks like the docker the docker image was created with the lambda function so it took a bit of time there so now that we have that let's just go ahead and quickly change the configuration let's bump some of these values so it doesn't time out really you want to be more careful with these values because amazon charges for the amount of value so if you are scaling Try to be really accurate with the amount of timeout, the storage, and the memory. We're just going to bump them fairly high just to run this test here. So we could go ahead and go to the test. So we'll wait for it to be done updating the function. So now it's done updating. We're just going to create a test. We have no specific input, so I just just did the regular event JSON. They come standard with these lambdas because we don't care about the keys of our event JSON. So it is running right now, and if everything is successful 
we should see those query values that we got from Google search with the open AI using Selenium. So what it's going to do, it's going to search open AI on Google and it's going to return us the results as you can see here. So it looks like everything was successful. We were able to use Selenium with the Crow driver and our AWS Lambda functions and Python. So that pretty much sums it up for today's video, guys. As you saw, we were able to create a Docker image that had Selenium and Chrome driver and successfully run a, a simple project here. And of course, this can be extended to more complicated projects. If this worked out for you or you learned something new or this even saved you a bit of time, please just consider subscribing to the channel because many of you guys who are watching this right now are not subscribed to this YouTube channel. If you have any questions or concerns or you want any in-depth help with your projects, you can reach out to me on Upwork if it's a really complicated or if it's a very simple question, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'll try my best to get back to you in a quick time. Typically, I'm very responsive. Let me know what you want to see in the next tutorial. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.